Well, I'm delighted um, today to welcome our new head of sixth form, uh, Spencer Pincus, who will be better known as Mr. Pincus, uh, who would be joining us in September. And the first thing I wanted to ask Mr. Pincus is why Cambridge? Well, it's a place that's very dear to my heart. I was at university uh, at Cambridge and spent three very happy years here. Um, and uh, I think it's, a, it's an exciting place academically, culturally. Um, and when I came to see Stephen Peirce, uh, I, I was equally excited by the school and the culture and everything that it represented. And uh, it was... Yes, there was an element of nostalgia walking from the station to Stephen Peirce, but it wasn't nostalgia when I walked in. It was actually thinking about what was new uh, and how different it was and how and how much opportunity there was here. So, uh, yes, it's a place that's dear to my heart as an area, but uh, coming back with uh, a new school that uh, I think has so much uh, to offer um, and uh, so much potential and excitement, I think, was, was something that very much attracted me to Cambridge. So what's, I'm looking forward to being what's here. What's very interesting about you, Mr. Pinkers, is that you almost were not the person who was going to come into us to be head of our sixth form because you were going to be a barrister. So what went wrong or what went right? Um, you know, sometimes in life when things... I think what went wrong is absolutely the right question um, because uh, I think when I started into law, I, I loved it as an as a, as a academic discipline. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think when I went into practice, uh, it, it whilst it it offered lots of opportunities and I think it's a great career for people to do. Uh, for me personally, there were elements that I felt led me much more towards another career and education was the obvious choice for me. And that was really, I'm a foremost a people person. I think the particular area of law I was in was not so much advocacy focused. I like working with people. Uh, I like helping people. I like interacting with people. So a lot of what I was doing was, was very much sort of paperwork side of life, procedural work. But also, I think my subject, I missed my subject. I was an English uh, student at university. It was a subject that I lived and breathed uh, and drama uh, in many ways. Uh, And I think as I practiced law more and more, I came to have that feeling that actually the thing that I wake up and breathe more uh, was my subject. So a combination of wanting to use that and work with people, it's, it felt like education was a more natural place to be. And I think with law, it's a massive commitment. And I think you need to look, as anybody should, at the sort of next five to 10 years. Uh, and actually, I thought my five to 10 year, years, I can see myself working in the profession, education profession rather than in the legal one. So I could have continued with it. But I think actually, and I don't regret it, that's important to say, mm. I think what I learned from law was so invaluable uh, both the skills that come with it the knowledge it brings I think just generally the self-awareness I think you become a fairer person Mm. uh, if you've experienced legal training you sort of see multiple sides Mm. (laughs) of an argument I think actually without that I would feel like uh, you know I'd missed out so I think absolutely it it was the right choice to do at the time loved it uh, enjoyed the study of it but I know I'm happier with the ultimate professional decision I made but you know you we come out of university I think you need to find out through doing what it is that works for you that's very true and I, I actually applaud the fact that you believe that people should understand multiple sides of arguments because we live in an age where people are struggling to do that yes. uh, so that is a very very positive thing to, 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 to share with students uh, so as a, a student of English uh, if I were to ask you about a book that you feel if, if there was a book that a student should read what would you suggest Oh uh, well, a very big question. Uh, lots I could recommend. Uh, one that's r- one that I've come to really enjoy, actually, and, and appreciate is uh, a novel called um, uh, Ruth. Uh, sorry, Anne Veronica. I'll actually, go for Anne Veronica by H. G. Wells. Um, which and H. G. Wells is known for his uh, sort of sci-fi and uh, all things um, otherworldly. But actually, this particular Anne Veronica uh, is a fantastic. Uh, novel. It's it's a sort of new new woman novel charting the movement of the suffragettes, very much the suffragettes, the kind of militant uh, aspects of, of the uh, women's suffrage movement. And what's I think interesting about it? Yes, it offers another perspective. Uh, male writers were just as interested in the the women's cause as as uh, as women writers. And I think uh, H. G. Wells came in at an interesting time, towards the end actually of the suffrage movement. Uh, sort of just turn of the century but I think H.G. Wells is perhaps underrated in, this, in that he's only known for that particular science fiction world and I think he he captures something quite 
powerful about the spirit of the character in Amber Veronica, who is defiant, she's headstrong, she's everything uh, that actually young people should be, someone who believes in herself and wants to, do, wants to see the world. And I think it's quite a powerful story. Uh, so I think that's certainly one I would recommend. Um, and if I were to go for something more, uh, more current, I, I'm a big fan of Ian McEwan, uh, he's uh, a really, one, I think he's well known as one of the best living and breathing English writers, but he, his uh, uh, recent ish novel uh, called Nutshell was uh, a very, very interesting novel. And I, what I like about that, um, I always say, say well, why read uh, literature? Because it takes you to different places. Well, this is told from the perspective of a fetus. So uh, quite an interesting narrative perspective. Um, and I think, I won't say much more about it, but it does, it is a sort of retelling of Hamlet. Uh, so if you're interested in Shakespeare, it might be one for you to read. But actually that says something as well about the universality of literature and how it's sort of, other writers are learning from other writers. Uh, and McEwen said something rather interesting uh, about literature and how we learn to empathise. Uh, and see different points points of view. So coming back to that, actually, that I mentioned earlier, and I think McEwen captures that very well in his characters. And in a nutshell, is a, 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 a novella, really, so a short read, but certainly worth reading, and one that I queued up for uh, the night before it came out in a day's publication to get. So that was my Harry Potter moment. Um, <laughs> and I, I very much enjoyed it. And I did read it all uh, before it uh, officially came on general release the next morning. So I felt like I'd got ahead of the uh, the critics but it was really enjoyable so McEwen certainly a writer who I would advise anybody interested in reading to, to explore um, and there's always a new one coming in fact there's a new one coming out soon uh, about the uh, technology and how it affects society so I think it's coming out in a few weeks time are so you going to queue up for that as well I will queue up for that I did look online and actually you can you can pre-order copies but there's something quite exciting about going to <laughs> I think going to get one from a bookshop uh, actually is, is yeah. I'd rather that than the Amazon parcel I think there's something more exciting and you get to meet perhaps other people who are equally uh equally uh <laughs> curious and wanting to go and find out what's so were you a harry potter fan i did read the first harry potter and that was partly because i was uh, uh invited to go and see it in the cinema uh and uh, so it's quite yeah. a while after publication uh, i enjoyed it but i think i didn't commit to the rest of the series i have seen most of the uh the film adaptations but uh harry potter is enjoyable uh but i don't, I don't think it's uh, sort of i, I guess it, the closest it falls to my area of interest might be magic, magic realism yeah uh but yeah. it's it's not a, not my my favorite genre but i'm happy to explore it so i didn't say no to reading it um but uh you know i tend to find my own interest yeah. in reading so i think yeah i had to i had to at least be the first one because everybody was talking about yeah, it so i need to know what was going on but you're a great gilbert and sullivan fan aren't you <laughs> i am indeed <laughs> um i first came across i don't know when i've heard gilbert and sullivan i probably heard about it. a lot of universities um have gilbert and sullivan societies um but i first really came across gilbert and sullivan uh, a bit later when I was actually a law student I think and I was doing some amateur theatre amateur dramatics um, and there was a, an adaptation of one of uh, their most famous pieces operettas the Mikado there was an adaptation called uh, Hot Mikado and it's a it's a mid 20th century jazzy interpretation a musical version really enjoyable great music uh, and a, a plot that you cannot summarise uh, there's no way of giving a synopsis it's just uh, a whole mixture of of, of uh, uh, strands that kind of never seem to quite match up but I really that's what I like about it is the known as sort of topsy-turvy world mm. uh, where nothing quite makes sense but Gilbert and Sullivan were sharp wasn't it Gilbert sharp satirists uh, they observe society Victorian society and a lot of people today I think see them as sort of nostalgic but actually they were quite fierce critics of their own mm. culture and I think that, that's that's something that's often missed so I really enjoy Gilbert and Sullivan and there's a, a festival in Harrogate which I, I think it's the International Gilbert and Sullivan Festival, which I uh, hope to go and visit for the first time because uh, I have I've been to the Edinburgh Festival uh, probably six or seven times. So this will be a good chance to go and see something else. It's around the same time in August, uh, but apparently there are lots of people who, like me, like Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> So not so niche. <laughs> not so niche. Not so niche. I think, it, and I think actually, it's got a w wider fan base than, than it's otherwise mm. led to be believed. Mm. I think it's it appeals to a whole range of people, mm. and I think it's um, you know it's, it's it's something that's just part of the culture. It's always there somewhere. Mm. It's been parodied in The Simpsons. Mm. Uh, so Sideshow Bob, I think, probably done a few renditions of something from Gilbert and Sullivan repertoire. Mm. But uh, it is very much part of our culture, and I think there's it, it, it speaks a lot about sort of the past, but actually you can say something interesting about the future with it too 
Uh, there's plenty of material I'd have thought for a new Gilbert and Sullivan operetta uh, looking at today's society and thinking about what aspects of our society today uh, you know, are not working or need rethinking. And I think they did exactly that. They sort of stepped back mm. and they would have a look at society, uh, often using traditional forms of music, mm. just reinterpreting, bringing them up to date. Um, and telling stories that were quite powerful in many ways. So yes, very much a fan. Uh, and I think every every good place should have a, a, a Gilbert and Sullivan society of some sort. Um, <laughs> so um, as head of our sixth form coming in, um, you're coming from a background where you've had responsibility for organising um, enrichment and enhancement for a whole number of students who may, be, may or may not be Gilbert and Sullivan fans. Um, they could have very different interests. So for you, what is the hallmark um, of a, a good programme of enrichment for every student? What would you like to see? Well, I think uh, in enrich- you know, for, for enrichment specifically, I think enrichment is about uh, offering students uh, an opportunity to go places beyond the curriculum, to see try subjects that they would otherwise not experience. I think it needs to, be, yes, of course, be balanced. But part of the ethos, though, of enrichment is not in many ways to just do more of what you're already good at doing um, which is which is important as well if you have a specific skill set if you're a, a drama student yes of course get involved in school drama and be be involved in productions but actually there may be other areas that you haven't yet explored and I think a good enrichment program will cater for all of that so I think it, it it's a, a really important aspect of a sixth form because this is the opportunity for you to try things before you go off and our system generally tries you know is it is, a, is about that sort of pyramid towards a degree but actually when you get to university there's going to be so much on offer as well and I think enrichment's part of that so some students uh, from my experience have tried a new subject in enrichment and will have perhaps come back to that as a career later on uh, so uh, whether it's an introduction to a subject like law or sociology or whether it's trying a new skill set as well um, something that could be to do with uh, leadership management business enterprise these areas I think they offer important skills and that's what enrichment should be building on so it's not a, it isn't so much more of the same I think it's building on what you're good at but actually trying new things and I would hope every sixth former uh, would embrace the opportunity uh, that the sixth form offers to to try out new subjects. So, Mr. Spencer Pincus, it's been a joy to have an insight into you and who you are and your own personal passions. And we really look forward to you joining us in September. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it too.